privileged to be here and to get to introduce to you and to also moderate this session with Julie. Um, as many of you know, I'm a fan of questions and uh, curiosity and and um, utilizing that. And, and I want to say you're in a great place today because we have a very skilled and expert facilitator and speaker here to share with you information about that uh, topic. Um, one of the things I would just kind of quickly highlight is a little bit about our presenter today. So you're all well aware of who we have. Um, you know, Julie has been working with uh, organizational change, leadership assessment development, um, competency modeling, strategic planning, DEI, exe and executive communications and coaching. And that's one of the things that I think she has a passion around. We've had some time to talk and I've gotten a chance to, to meet with uh, meet Julie and learn more about her. And that focus on working with, you know, high potential individuals, um, executives and and at multiple levels, you know, for folks who are striving, striving to hit a greater impact and expand their ability to influence and make their organization successful um, comes from this topic and an area that you'll, you'll be looking at today where she focuses on, you know, immediate issues and acquiring new tools. So again, Right. What are we here today for the upskill, right? Reskill, thrive. So you're in a great place. Her combination of experiences give a broad perspective on those combined areas that I talked about. And, you know, and that expertise that she has is going to help you today in this very interactive session that she's got ready for you uh, around questions and how you can utilize those to, again, drive yourself forward, upskill reskill and thrive. So I'm going to stop belaboring the point and hand it off to, to Julie. Thanks so much for being here and um, and virtually being here, like really virtually, because um, I'm going to let you, you know, hint at that or talk about that if you'd like, because I think it's awesome. Happy to do that. Well, Kevin, thank you so very much. I appreciate the, the gracious it's context setting for why I chose to work with you all today around this idea of questions and questions as a tool in your tool belt to be a much more effective communicator. Hey, I will tell you that, yes, as Kevin mentioned, I decided a few months ago to take that term remote work very seriously. And so today I'm actually in the evening time talking to you from Lisbon, Portugal, where I have, I'll be working for this whole month. And yet I still have the privilege of spending most of my time with folks at universities around the US, no matter where I'm located. I'm very excited to focus on questions today and I'll tell you why. Even in this week, I would tell you that the majority of my conversations, whether they be coaching, working with assessment, across universities, I, that's where I spend most of my time, whether it's when I've been teaching in the classroom with business students, working with staff on various issues, administrators, uh, deans, boards, advisory boards, and trustees, what is really important in all those cases is how communication happens. I will tell you that this week alone, I've had no less than three very specific conversations with folks about questions. In some cases, it was about how people asked questions, and so it helped a search committee understand how how well qualified or how a candidate thought and made a huge impression on whether they saw that person as aligned with the job they were seeking to feel. I also spent some time with a senior leader talking about working between faculty and staff and how was it that asking questions in a task force meeting versus making statements, how did that help the leader of that task force actually get buy-in from everybody on the team and make it more collaborative rather than making statements about what was to happen. I'll tell you, all the time, I become more and more aware that the little simple question is the unsung hero of really good communication and often just gets a short shrift of us throwing them in as needed and they don't become part of our planning on how we're going to communicate both what we want to share and garner the information that we're looking for. So today, 
We're going to give the question it's due. We're going to take a look at several items around questions. And I challenge you, as you think about this unsung hero, the question, think about how we walk away with a greater understanding of the power of that. As we begin to look at our questions, here's where we're going to walk through together today. We're going to look at different types of questions. Of course, you've used these all the time, but we want to be intentional about examining the question as a tool. We're going to look at what are the context or the situations in which we use tools. We're then going to look at in practice, how do we craft really powerful and impactful questions. I'll give you a few little tricks of the trade that I use with folks all the time as I do coaching. And then we're going to actually experience. Experiential learning is the key for people to embed the use of tools that we talk about. So I never want to work in any situation where we don't get our hands dirty and touching, feeling, and seeing how this works. So we'll be doing that throughout our time together today. What does it look like, feel like, to not only ask that question that creates impact, but also when we hear a question that creates impact, taking note of that. The outcome for you all today is that just be prepared. I know this is going to be recorded, so you'll have a great resource, but I'm going to ask you to listen as well as create questions, and I promise you, you'll walk away from today with a whole bevy of questions that you can utilize. So please know this is all about sharing, and I can promise you, you're going to walk away with some favorite questions you're going to use over time. In the midst of that, I want you to be ready to engage. Kevin mentioned be where, be in a situation where you can either take notes, you're ready to use a couple of the tools within Zoom that help it be more interactive. Um, and those will be that we're going to use whiteboards for you all to tell me what you're thinking. We'll also be using the reaction. Sometimes I'll say, everyone who has done X or Y, give me a, a quick green button. So please make sure you know where your reactions area is. So take a look, that should be at the bottom of your page. Then we'll also be using breakout rooms. I'm gonna put you in smaller groups to actually be able to practice, interact, and talk about questions. So with that, let's get started. Let's first take a look at, in general, I wanna hear your perspective about questions. And so Kevin, if you'll put up a whiteboard, I, I'm gonna ask you these three questions and I'd like for you all to click on your text tool as we go into the whiteboards and give me your thoughts. So first of all, we'd like to look at why do we ask questions? To understand better, thank you. Often to clarify, I appreciate that. To get a better understanding of something or someone, exactly. It can be about an issue or it can be about an individual. Excellent, to learn about each other's stories, to find common ground, connect. If you don't know, you wanna get more or to help move forward. Lots of good reasons why to get. Oh, we're getting forward. some additional, sorry, contributions in the chat as well. Julie, just want to yes, let you know. thank you. I'm okay. trying to. I'm seeing those as we go. I see engagement. Absolutely, a reason why you would ask a question. Oh, I love it. explore more options. We'll talk about that when we think about different ideas, new options. Get the right answers. I love it. Sometimes there are right and wrong answers. We want to find out what that is. Efficiency is coming up, broader perspective. Help other people know that you're listening. That is an excellent reason why we may ask a question. We want them to know we're following along. We're right there with them. It's excellent in negotiations. Building the relationships, we see innovate again, come up with problem solving, creativity. So many different reasons why. Love somebody just contributed trust but verify. That's one of my favorite ways to make sure that I know what's happening, but I wanna confirm that. 
Excellent. So many good reasons why we ask questions. Let's look at our next question. The second question. After why, which is, when are we going to ask questions? What are the situations in which we do that? I can see Robin, thank you to move a group forward. Often that's the time. Throughout, absolutely. I think often we may wait to ask questions at the end of a project or a conversation, but throughout is key. During a pause, sometimes when things are kind of at a standstill, when things are unclear. I also love that somebody said before even getting started, it really helps to think about all the components and questions are a great way to bring that to the surface. Sometimes it's, I love that we have here just context, a team meeting. It could also be in a one-on-one. -on -one. Make sure, I like the, to verify we're on the same page. Uh, check in, that's when you might do that. I also like that someone said uncomfortable silence. Often people are afraid to speak up, but a question gives them a way to focus what they may wanna share and then others begin to share around the same thing. And then in purple, always really like that. There really isn't a time that a question can't add some value. So let's take a look at our third question. We looked at why, we looked at when, and now let's look at what is the impact of questions from your own experience. When you've asked a question, what impact have you seen? Also, when you've had a really good, solid, provocative, thought-provoking question asked of you, what was the impact? Cause personal reflection, absolutely. It can provide clarity, build relationships, excitement, connection, helps people be on the same page. It can definitely move things forward. That's the impact it can have. Oh. What a powerful one. Change in behavior. Absolutely. Often the question allows someone to respond in a way that it creates an insight for them that actually can change a behavior. Often more effectively than making a statement about what should be changed is when that person from a question thinks about it. Better decisions can be the impact. Oh, spawning more questions. Often that's what's needed is to get into that mode of looking for various perspectives. And definitely it can help avoid miscommunication. Actually stating and confirming keeps from having a misconception or only listening through our own filters or seeing something through our own filters. I love that you all are thinking very broadly about this. So now that we have taken a look at why, when, and the impact, I've heard your perspectives. Let's dive in together to take a look at the tools of questions. And let's start that as I share back my screen with you. At looking at types of questions. I know that you use many types of questions, and I, I want us just to revisit that a little bit and think together about some general categories. There's one particular type of question that I notice often is not heavily used or is not intentionally used. It may come in, but it's not one that we focus on. So we'll get to that in just a moment. First of all, we often use open-ended or closed-ended questions. Not uncommon for us to think about this. Open-ended questions are ones that allow for lots of information to be brought to the surface, or it can be just really broad. We don't have a general direction. We really are just gathering lots of information before we dive into something specific. It's interesting, right as we were getting started, Kevin and I were talking about what I like to call the false open-ended question. We think we're asking an open-ended question. And yet when we ask the question, for example, we may ask someone, 
how did you get to work today? It may sound like an open-ended question, but because there is a specific answer to that question for that individual, it actually is a closed question because it has a specific answer. When we think about how do we ask a good open-ended question, it should lead to a variety of answers. It may start with how, it may start with what. It may start with, can you tell me more about the things that you've already tried? The key in thinking about open-ended questions is to ask a question in a way that allows for multiple answers. The opposite, of course, is a closed question. You all said many of the reasons you ask questions is to get clarification, to get specific information. And a closed-ended question absolutely can facilitate that. So those are the two big buckets that we're very familiar with, uh, is the open-ended and the closed questions. The second category I want to talk about is fact or information questions versus value questions. We're very familiar with getting information, and those are fact questions. So we may ask, what, what is the right time of year to work on the schedules? When do I, you know, when is the budget due? When do I need to deliver the, the presentation for you to make sure it's loaded into the system? That's getting facts. The unsung value question is the one that I don't hear people think about a lot. In fact, in some instances, people feel uncomfortable or feel like it is, Maybe not the right thing to ask, to ask a value question. However, we are whole people. We have the way that we think, right? So there's a cognitive component of any situation we're working in. And then there is the feeling emotional component. My quick fact, and I promise I, I love facts and I could throw in a million along the way. But one of my favorite things when we think about this is to say that when people make decisions, those are the two big buckets. They use facts and they have a cognitive component and they have the way they feel about it. Research tells us that for the most part within our day, usually more than 50% of the weight of information that goes into making decision is more about how it, the motion than just the pure facts about it. So as we think about questions and we ask value questions, they may sound like this. Taking a look at why is this important to you? You know, what do you think? That's a value. You know, what is it you think about it? How do you see this? Why is this important to you? Why would this make a difference? What about using a different method makes this easier for you to move forward. So asking a value question, something that's of value to the individual and not just pure information or outcome-based is incredibly helpful. We'll talk a, a little bit more in just a moment about how we incorporate that in the way that we work with others. The last category, just as a reminder, are the echo questions and leading questions. So earlier, one of you mentioned, and I appreciate you bringing to the surface, that we ask questions sometimes to let people know that we're listening. An echo question does that well. They may say, I'm looking for full service planning for this event here on campus. You may, as you see here, echo what they just said. You're looking for full service for this plant for this event. They know that you heard them and it invites them to give more details. Leading questions can be very helpful when we don't, uh, when a, a statement may not be effective, but we ask a question that moves in the direction that we want people to, in some ways, make their own discovery in that pathway forward. Example you see here, you may say, what if we could offer full service? That may be what you think is the best solution. And instead of saying, I believe full service event planning is what you need, you may ask it as a question. It gets them thinking in the direction that you want to guide the conversation, that you 
want to explore further with the individual with whom you're speaking. So a reminder of ways that these questions can be really useful and helpful as you are in different situations. In that case, let's think about what are the different situations and contexts that we're in each day where we would use these types of questions. Today, while there are many, many places where you can be using questions, today I want to just have us focus on a few. As we think about how we, you know, upskill and move forward and reskill and thrive, these are two areas that we all are engaged in almost on a daily basis. The first is to think about our own career, kind of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. We may be asking questions while we're networking. It could be in an interview. Either you be, could be interviewing someone and asking them questions, or as an interviewee, you have question opportunity. And then you all mentioned, absolutely, building and nurturing relationships <laughs> where a lot of questions come in. On a day-to-day -day basis, those things we do in the job or in your role is problem solving. Definitely questions are helpful there. When you're creating something new, asking those bigger picture, open-ended questions, then in collaborating, often that's where a question is much better tool to get buy-in than making statements or just assigning different parts of a project. And again, that goes hand in hand with gaining buy-in. You'll notice I put that we have perspectives or mindsets at which we come to these different contexts. It could be that we're an individual contributor in the context. It could be that we're a team member. So we're having to think collectively about how we work as a team or on a task force or in a group, or we may be the one who's, who's charged with leading or coaching or mentoring in any of these particular situations. A reminder of some of the ways in which we can use questions. You all talked about when, these are definitely some of those contexts. The other one that you mentioned when I asked that large question was about innovation and problem solving and creativity. Often, I think we don't give enough credit to questions at how that nurtures, kicks off, and helps us move to new places. Just a couple of pieces that I've worked with folks over time, and these are ones I know you've seen, but just to start your thinking, we often ask why. So why are we not getting the result that we are looking for? Why have we not had people responding to our event invitation? Initially asking, what's going on? The what if question. What if we were able to do more marketing? What if we could reach a broader audience? What if people were able to do this alongside their current responsibilities? The what if opens possibilities beyond any resource constraints. And often I think we're afraid to ask the what if question because we start with what we think cannot be. So don't forget the what if. How could, another way of kind of asking the same thing, how could we make this more accessible to a broader number of people? How could we, so imagining things that could happen. And then what else? Someone mentioned earlier in the whiteboard of multiple solutions and options. Once we come up with a solution, almost to have a backup plan or just continue outward with imagining. So what else could we do? What else would be possible? What else if we had unlimited resources? And then my personal favorite that I use often is the what would it look like? Many of the greatest creative innovations have come from someone imagining what it could look like to do something that had never been done. So thinking about what it would look like, how it would feel, how it, it could, how you could exist in a different context is great at moving creativity forward. So now that we have looked at the situations in our career, how we're going to ask questions as we nurture that in our day-to-day -day work, as we're creatively solving problems or moving things forward, whether it's 
solving or something new and different that we're putting together. I want us to now take a look at how do we craft questions. And here's where we're going to have time together. I'm going to put you into groups and let you practice. What I'd like you to do, I've, I've decided to uh, start with these categories. And what I'm going to ask you to do in these categories is to pick one. We're going to put you into groups of five. I want you as a group to pick one of these four areas, networking, relationships, collaboration, or when you're going to solve a problem. And create as many questions as you can when you're in your group together. From that, I want you to then pick your favorite question that you've created together. And then when you come back, when I bring us all back together, I want one person to be ready to share that. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna have you type it in to the uh, chat area so that we can collect them all. And then I want you to raise your hand in your reaction, if you can raise your hand and I'll have a few people share, what are these questions that you found really powerful, maybe you hadn't thought about before. And it'll be a good way for us to think differently and intentionally be planning these questions. I just wanna give you one quick example. You notice that networking, this is my favorite question I have used for many, many, many years. You see, it says, what is your expertise? I have used that question so powerfully. Instead of asking someone, what do they do? Asking, what is your expertise? Gets me a whole host of answers. I, I'll never forget, I was on a trip and I happened to board an airplane and I was sitting beside a gentleman that looked a little bit familiar to me, but I wasn't quite sure because I'm not a big professional sports person. And all of a sudden I realized this person was a baseball player. And I knew that he, he, you know, he had his hat on. He was kind of not looking at me. And, and I knew he probably didn't want to be bothered. But being the outgoing person I am, I said, hello, good morning. And then I asked him this question. I, I asked him where he was headed, you know, when we were going to a particular destination. And I said, oh, so, you know, tell me what's your expertise? And he, he kind of smiled. And he looked at me and he said, I'm in athletics. And this happened to be um, a catcher for the New York Yankees. I didn't know who he was, <laughs> but he gave him an opportunity to not feel bombarded, to say something he loved. And I will tell you, when I've asked that question, someone sometimes people tell me what their job is, a job title. I've had people say, I don't know that I'm an expert at anything. And it just starts a really nice conversation. I've had times where they tell me what they love that's more their hobby than their profession. So thinking in these categories, what are some questions that we can ask that get a different kind of answer? I've given you a quick set of hints at the top and I call these question starters. I'm a little confused, love that one. If instead of getting upset with someone about not doing something, if you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you may say, I'm a little confused. I thought we agreed that we were going to do X. I don't see that that has happened yet. Help me understand. Another phrase here, where you are in the process, right? I'm a little concerned. We talked about X, Y, Z happening and we're two days past the deadline. I'm curious. I know Kevin showed me today, he had his I'm curious cup with him, which I love. It's a great way to start. I'm curious, how were you able to do that? Tell me more. Tell me more about the way in which you were able to accomplish X. So these are some great starters. Here's what I'm going to have us do. As we go into our breakout rooms, again, pick one of these four categories as a group. Create as many questions as you can. Decide on your favorite question. And then when you come back, we're gonna put those in the chat. Then one person out of the group be willing to raise their hand. I'm gonna call on several of you to share some of your questions that you really liked as you were collectively creating and crafting really good intentional questions. As you go into the breakout room, you'll get an invitation, accept it. And you're gonna have 10 minutes with your group 
to create questions either around networking, relationships, collaboration, or problem solving. All right, Jill, if you will launch the invitations and have people head into their rooms. I may be jumping around when I come in, I'm just listening. So keep on with your discussions. I see folks popping back in, excellent from your groups. Whoever decided that they took the responsibility to put the favorite question into chat, please go ahead and type in the favorite questions that your group determined they wanted to share with everyone into the chat. And reminder that we will be record, it is recorded and the chat will be saved. So you'll have this list of questions. So please go ahead, put into chat some of your favorite questions. And then I also invite you to raise your hand, those that really love the question you wanna share with the group, if you'll please raise your hand and I'm gonna have you just share them out loud with the group as well. And then because I like for us to all be encouraging with one another in the midst of learning these new questions, if you hear a question you love, give it, use your reaction button, give it a green check or a hand wave or a celebration. If you hear those questions that just really resonate and that you're going to be borrowing those to use yourself. So please raise your hand and let's see, Shelly, please share your first un unmute and share the question you loved from your group. Um, so the question that kind of encapsulated everything that we discussed in our group um, was in regards to collaboration. And right. our question was, what are your bigger picture needs, expectations, or business needs that we can work on together to see what your options are? Nice. That open-ended question. It was value asking about someone's needs. Really powerful question. Thank you all for sharing that one. Um, Eridri, and forgive me if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. Thanks for raising your hand. Share a question. Sure. So we um, we decided to um, address the problem solve one. Okay. Um, right. So these are in no particular order. Um, but when did the problem arise? Why is the problem happening? Who does it impact? How does it impact you and others? Do others perceive this as a problem? Um, mm -hmm. Have you tried anything to resolve the problem previously? Has the problem happened previously? Um, and I think that's I think that was it. And I hope my my group feels like that was correct. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you for those. I heard a number of really good. Uh, clarifying questions, some closed-ended questions. I heard a couple of open-ended questions. And just a, a good point to make as you had that nice list of questions is some of those could easily go from a closed to an open instead of asking, have you tried anything else, which could be answered with a yes or a no, is what have you tried? it could broaden it out a little bit. So just a reminder, a little tweak on some of our questions can make them serve multiple purposes. So thank you for that group. Zuzu, please share. Hi. So as we uh, approach collaboration, uh, it started with, I'm curious, uh, what is your communication style? Um, please tell me more about X, Y, Z. We talked about, um, I have a situation and we talked about problem solving and how sometimes talking with a group, people start asking you questions and more ideas come up on how to approach your problem. And our last one uh, that we started and got interrupted was, how would you like to receive feedback? Because oh, some people, we talked about how some people are better on the phone, some are better in person, some, you know, how do you adjust for the Zoom and the hybrid environment and make sure that you're heard, so. That is such a powerful one. Thank you to Zuzu and the whole group. Simply asking, how do you like to receive feedback? It, it makes it a much, uh, much more engaged. It makes it a more productive 
conversation instead of assuming what works for you will work for the person with whom you're speaking or engaging. So thank you. I'm going to take two more groups and then we're going to dive into just a few more things. But thank you. I'm seeing phenomenal, phenomenal questions in the chat. So please keep reading through the chat. So Kara, would you please share from your group? Certainly. We honed in on relationship type questions, and the one that we liked the best was, what could you not live a day without? Oh, nice. Nice. It really helps get at what matters to that person and how you get to know them. Love that one. So thank you for sharing that very specific but insightful question. So Jordan, please share with us. Hello. Um, yes, yeah, so we actually approached uh, networking as our topic and pretty organically the first question that came up as we were you know, really just trying to brainstorm what questions we could form formulate was actually about staff organizations. So I asked, you know, are you a part of different staff organizations or committees on campus? And, you know, I even in just that organic question, I learned a ton about how to get involved in different organizations as a, a little bit over a two-year employee here. Nice. Nice. Sometimes the simplest question invites the broadest set of information. So again, love that. Thank you, Jordan, and your group. Maria? Uh, yeah, we had networking as well. Um, and unfortunately, we were discussing the questions up until the last minute, so we weren't able to pick a favorite. But I will choose one of the ones that came up, which I thought was really good as well, which is what what have you found rewarding? Or what is a big win in regards to your work? Excellent. What's a big win? What have you found rewarding? Again, these value questions. I, I trust that as you all begin to think about the questions you heard in your group, and of course, we're dissecting today, is to think about, you know, what type of question was it? It could be more than one. It could be a, an open-ended value question. It could be a closed fact question. I love those because it really serves too. It's networking, but it also can be very relationship building. So it sounds like some great discussion in your group. So thank you. Uh, we've got three more folks that I see have their hand raised. So let's make sure that we encompass all those as you all continue to read those wonderful questions I'm also seeing in the chat. So Katrina, please share. Um, yes, so our group, we um, chose problem solve and I think the one of our favorite questions regarding problem solving was um how did we get here and nice. you know i believe everybody might have a different interpretation and in how we got yeah, sure. to this problem so kind of getting more gaining more perspective mm -hmm. i like that and, and i just want to point out too i love that you all selected a collective pronoun we often if we ask a you or how did you get here or what did you do it becomes it puts people in a defensive posture so just a little thing to think about is more collective ways in which we can talk about something um, the other thing i'll just mention is often the word why while there are definitely appropriate places to use that in a question it i always advise people it should be your last resort way to start a question Using why, often think about when we were younger or maybe you've done something wrong and what's the first thing a parent would ask you? Why did you do that? Often why causes a defense feeling, being defensive instead of an open discussion feeling. So just a little tidbit reminder um, that that might not be your first call and creating question. So Tyler, share the questions that you all came up with. All right, yes, our group also like honed in on problem solving. Okay. We came up with a pretty good you know, list of questions, varying levels of being either the very, kind of like the very broad question going into like the fairly narrowly focused. What we came up with kind of the question that we I think we generally, that we came to agreement on is mm -hmm. like kind of like the, I think sort of like the, what would be like an, an initial broad question of what problem are we solving? And as you just mentioned, why isn't 
be the best way to end that question, but you're using that as more of a lead in to figuring out that to leads into a lot many more more targeted follow-up questions that we had. Absolutely. Like how does this fit into our organizational goals? Who are mm -hmm. the stakeholders we need to consider? Nice like collection of questions for sure. I, I like that, you know, when you, you first started problem solving, the number one, and that's such a, I'm glad you brought that one forward. Often we're solving the wrong problem. So that's a great question to have in your kind of repertoire of questions when you start problem solving is what problem are we really solving here? I, I can imagine, and give me a quick green check. If you've ever gotten way into a project and realized you were solving the wrong problem. Yeah, I see a number of green checks going up. I, I personally have been involved in many of those situations. So love that you brought that forward. Thank you, Ty, and the group for bringing forward that question for us to, to consider. And then Stephanie, we'll let you all be the last group that shares out loud. We also picked the very popular problem solving um, area okay. and um, we kind of identified like three areas that, that first was identifying the problem and that was again providing the context so that we all were on the same page and so there wasn't any confusion that somebody might think they're solving one problem somebody thinks it's something totally different. Um, and then what is the solution coming up with asking those questions surrounding what is the solution, asking people, you know, what's your wildest idea, because it might be possible to do a wildest idea. Um, and I, what's your ideal outcome and then finally it was how how will this be implemented and who does it impact making sure we're equitable in our solution but we really liked the question of asking individual stakeholders what their understanding of the problem was so that we all knew we were solving the same problem oh, that, that one's wonderful as we began today several people said questions help us make sure we're on the same page that is the perfect sample of asking someone so what's your understanding you know, another way maybe to do that is, can you describe to me, um, you know, how, what is the approach you'll be taking? Or can you tell me how you're going to deliver on this part, right? That, what is your understanding and get people to tell you how they're gonna proceed, helps you make sure that there was a communication that is in alignment with what you intended or what you desired. Oh my gosh, what great questions you all came up with. And you know what I'm seeing in the actual chat area, what a powerful set. This is gonna be a great list that you all keep as we go forward. Now that we've thought about, we've practiced preparing and being intentional about our questions and thinking about them. The next thing I want us to think about is in experiencing the impact of it or the productivity of a good question. We've got these different question types. You all now have an additional cache of questions that you have in your back pocket that you can use in appropriate situations. Let's think about how we combine them. I know that many of you have probably heard of the funnel approach, so this may be a reminder or just a good way to think about how do you put all these together? You see that in this funnel, we've got different kinds of questions. And here's what it may sound like, just kind of an example. You may start with an open-ended value question. So what are your thoughts about how we move forward with X project? Share your concerns. If we do it this way, what are your concerns about this solution? You may be asking, tell me more about your focus. What is it that you expect to happen as a result of this project? You know, you, some of you asked this question just a minute ago. So what would it take to succeed or what would success look like for you if we were able to support you in this way or reach this outcome? Then you can move down to some fact questions along the way using clarifying. So would you be willing to do X or would that solve the problem? Does it work this way? Or can you commit to being part of this on uh, this task force on a monthly basis. Ultimately, as you see at the bottom of the funnel, what you're reaching towards is an understanding or an agreement on whatever the conversation is about. 
If for some reason there isn't, then you simply go back to the top of funnel and ask a larger question to then funnel down more and more specifics around another stream of information or in creating uh, different solutions. You may then go back to the top and ask those questions around a second option that was brought up. So again, combining these questions in different ways to funnel to an agreement or an understanding. So now I, I'm going to have us go into groups of three smaller groups. We've talked about question types. We've talked about when. We've talked about context. You've created some fantastic questions uh, to think about in these different situations. Now, I want you to focus as you go into these groups, uh, just a triad, only three of you, on what is the impact? When someone asks the question, what happens in your mind? How might you answer it? What is your impression of that individual from having asked the question? So that's what I want you to focus on. I want you right now, before we put you into the groups of three, I want you, whether it's on a pen and paper, or just in your mind, I want you to think about a situation that you're dealing with right now. It could be a group, a task force, a project, whatever that may be. I want you to think about what are two questions that you could ask, ask to engage more fully in that situation that you're thinking about. And I, I really encourage you to use one that you're currently in the middle of because you'll get feedback. Take just a minute. Think of a scenario for yourself. Scribe down. Think about two questions that you can ask, given what we've been talking about today, in that particular context, scenario, situation. As you're doing that, I'm going to ask that, Jill, you set up the breakout rooms, three in a room. If you will set it up for, and this is going to be a quick one, if you'll set it up for seven minutes. And I'll give you just one more second here. Your invitation should be coming up. And when you go into your room, take turns. Share what the situation is and share your two questions. And then the other two folks give some feedback, what you like about it, what you might suggest they tweak or another way they might ask it, because we wanna know what that impact is from hearing the question. So please accept your invites, head into your rooms, and then I'll see you back in just a few minutes to hear what that felt like with the impact. Excellent. I see folks returning. I look forward to hearing just from a few of you uh, what the impact were from the great questions. I'm going to ask that you all in the chat put your favorite question that you heard one of your colleagues ask as you were discussing some very specific situations. So if you'll go ahead and start sharing those in chat as you did before. And then if you'll just raise your hand. What I'd love to hear you share is what, what was the impact of a really powerful question that someone shared about a situation? What did it make you think? Did it change your perception of that person or the way in which you were thinking about the scenario? Who would like to share? David, thank you for your questions. Go ahead, please. I heard a participant, uh, uh, one of my um, group mates, talking about um, how she could collaborate and combine a project. The, um, there are two groups working parallel, and she wanted to, them to collaborate more closely. And um, mm -hmm. I really found her questions, if I think about what did her questions say about her, mm -hmm. they, she's very open and um, really wanting to make that happen and um, that she felt that that would be valuable to the project as a whole. Nice. So the question gave you insight into who she was, as well as moving forward, what the teams could do together. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. 
Crystal? So mine was definitely work. Um, I work mostly remote and um, with with um, where I'm working or the, the area I'm working, my boss is a lot with the community and pu very public facing. So now a lot of it is working out in the community and not um, all, you know, all of us before behind our computers all the time, you know, it was kind of easier. Um, so it's kind of mixed media with her. So um, mine was how to make, I guess, more of a preference or not a preference, make more of a priority for her to meet with me. Like, oh, I got to cancel on you. I got to go do this meeting. I got, you know, like it's, I got to meet with a funder and, you know, like, okay, I get it. I understand. And then at some point you're like, but we still need to check in. So I'm not sure where we check in, you know, and email's not her thing. It's just not okay. at all. That's not it. So we were just saying, you know, maybe we can just ask her like, if I need something within, you know, one business day, you know, like within a business day, you know, I know you have meetings and you have this going on and I've seen her, you know, I see her calendar as well. Um, sure. You know, what's your preferred method of communication if I need something pretty urgently? Nice. Again, asking someone what works for them mm -hmm. is always really helpful. And, and again, it addresses some of those various areas we talked about relationships as well as getting information. And, you know, the impact is when someone asks what you want, it often is easier for them to just stop and say, oh, you know, what I prefer instead of them thinking, I can't do it the way you're asking me. It, it really changes the way that they see that you are asking them and that you value what matters to them. So thank you for sharing that, Crystal. I know that we're right at time. We could never have enough time to do this uh, and find all the best questions to ask. I, I trust that this has been a little taste and tidbit of practicing a skill that you all use every day, but looking at it in a little bit different way. And so here are my questions for you. As you think about the next step of what you're going to be doing with questions, what questions will you prepare? When you get ready to have a next conversation, think about what are you going to go in, both for the impression as well as for how it's going to help you communicate. What questions will you try that maybe you haven't before? Some of these value questions are really making sure you have a good open-ended question. What impact do you want to make? And maybe you test out those questions to see that the question is going to create the impact that you want in the situation that you're using it. And then lastly, asking yourself, what impact did I make with the questions that I use as we all work to be very impactful in our communications, please don't forget this unsung hero of good questions that can be one of your best friends and tools as you move forward to be effective and honestly just enjoy the communications that you have with folks on a day-to-day -day and across an even greater spectrum of time in your workspace and in your personal life. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you all. Thank you so much. And you notice that in the uh, chat, there is a survey. Please give us mm -hmm. feedback on the yeah. session. And Kevin, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Julie, for your engaging, uh, interactive and informative presentation and discussion uh, around questions. Yeah, as Julie mentioned, there is a, a link provided in the chat for you all. Please take time to complete that evaluation. There's also a QR code you can scan that's now up on the screen. Coming up next, uh, we have our mid-morning activity break.